Are you interested in learning Spencerian? Spencerian script is a beautiful style that's a little bit different than the normal copper plate calligraphy style. Today I'm going to answer all of the FAQs surrounding the Spencerian script, plus I'll show you some examples and give you a beginner's tutorial on how you can try Spencerian for yourself. Let's start with some of the big questions about Spencerian, starting with what does Spencerian look like? Here is an example of the Spencerian alphabet. You can see the capital and lowercase for each letter in the alphabet here. The script is very delicate and flowing, and it's not as heavy as some other calligraphy styles like copper plate. Here's an example of what it looks like in context. You can see that this letter was written in 1881. So Spencerian was used for personal correspondence. It was used for business letters. One of the benefits of Spencerian is that it was a lot quicker to write than English roundhand style of the time. So it was used for business, it was used for things like receipts. These examples again are from the 1800s. Now, why is it called Spencerian? It was created by this man named Platt Roger Spencer. He was born in 1800 in New York and then he lived in Ohio. He was always interested in handwriting as a young boy. And so he created the system of handwriting called Spencerian that was taught, it ended up being taught as the standard in schools. And then he also had five sons that went on to continue teaching. So he, the inventor of Spencerian, he spent his life teaching it. And then his five sons went on to continue teaching it and publishing books. This is the new Spencerian compendium that I got these images from. So we can see these historical examples, but how is it used today? If you go to Instagram and look up the hashtag Spencerian or Spencerian script, you can see that lots of people are still using it. Lots of people practice this style with other forms of calligraphy and other forms of art. They use it for writing letters to friends. They use it for wedding invitations and just for fun. I just like practicing it because I just think it's such a beautiful script. It's so satisfying to write and you can create some really beautiful things. Now, what I love using it for is writing on my iPad. And here are just a couple examples of ways that I've used Spencerian. This was created 100% digitally. I did all of the calligraphy on my iPad and I designed the background in Procreate, which is the app that I use for doing calligraphy. It's really fun to do this style on the iPad because you can create so many magical looking effects that you'd never be able to do on paper. And I love Spencerian because it also is the basic letter forms that I used in um, ornamental penmanship. So you can see the basic letters are Spencerian and then everything else, like in this example, these flourishes, that's what creates the look of ornamental penmanship. And you can create like this example of this M right here. The basic M is just like the inside part of that letter. But if you add these beautiful flourishes, you can create ornamental penmanship. And that's what I love most about it. Now let's talk about how Spencerian is different than copper plate. So you may be familiar with copper plate. Both of these scripts are traditionally written on paper with a pointed pen. Actually, when Spencerian was invented, the pointed pen nib was not yet invented, but then once it was, that's what people used for it. And let's just look at some of the differences. You can tell just the overall look of copper plate is more shaded. For example, you can see on the E in copper plate, the downstroke of the E is shaded, but in Spencerian, the E is not shaded. So in copper plate, every letter has a shade on the downstroke, but in Spencerian, you can see the shading is more sporadic. Another difference is the main slant. In Spencerian, which is what these guide sheets are for, the slant is 52 degrees, but in copper plate, it's slightly more upright, so this is 55 degrees. Spencerian also has another slant called the connective slant, which you can see between letters and within some letters, and this is about 30 degrees. Another difference is how rounded or how angular the script is. In copper plate, everything is based on an oval shape, and the bottom of these letters and the tops are all have a more rounded look. But in Spencerian, they're more angular, like this at the bottom and at the top. Like I said before, Spencerian is quicker to write. You can write it more continuously. It has fewer pen lifts, whereas in copper plate, you're lifting your pen after every single stroke. So you might think that Spencerian looks like cursive, and it actually does, because the style that came after Spencerian was invented by Austin Palmer, and it was called the Palmer Method. 
So Palmer wanted to create a script that was easier and more legible than Spencerian, also more practical, in other words, faster to write. And this method, the Palmer method, took over as the standard taught in schools after Spencerian. He also introduced the concept of combined muscular movement in which you use the hand and the arm and the finger muscles to write rather than whole arm movement. Whole arm movement is how Spencerian was traditionally done. Okay, now let's talk about how you can learn Spencerian. Spencerian is traditionally done on paper with a pen and ink. You can use a pointed pen for this. But if you don't have a pointed pen, you can actually just get started with any paper and pen that you have. I'm going to show you just using a regular micron pen. This is a monoline pen. It doesn't change thickness as you write like a pointed pen does. So the reason that you can use a monoline pen is because like I showed you before, Spencerian is not as shaded as a script like Copperplate. You only have shades on certain letters, like usually the downstroke of the compound curve of the N has a little bit of a shade. The oval of the A usually has a shade. And then the capital letters usually just have one shade. So in the S, the shade would be right here. And then some letters have optional shading, like you can optionally shade the bottom of the P. Also, there are different ways that you can write the P as well as some other letter variations. In the alphabet example that I showed you at the beginning, the, the P was written a slightly different way. That's one thing, another thing I love about Spencerian is that it was also designed to have a very specific standard, but also encourage individuality. So as I'm writing, pay attention and watch how few times I'm able to lift my pen. Spencerian is usually written a lot smaller than what I'm doing right now, but when you're learning, it's really good to zoom in and look at all of the details. And again, if you're writing with a monoline pen, you can go back in and add some of the shading. Another spot where you'll see shading is at the top of the T, and then for you can also make the bottom of the P have a shade. Let's really quickly talk about the basic strokes of the lowercase letters. Now in Spencerian, you have four basic strokes for the lowercase letters, and they're very, very simple. The first one is just a straight line. The second one is called a right curve, and that just curves to the right. The second, the third one is a left curve like this. And then the last one is a loop, and the loop looks like this. So this would be in letters like H, B, and then if you flip this one upside down, that would be the lower loop, like that. And these loops are actually formed by a combination of this basic stroke. So you can see that this first part right here is just a really long right curve. And then you have a little bit of a left curve, and then it comes down with a straight line. So really these three strokes, straight line, right curve, and left curve, are the building blocks of all of the lowercase letters. Now you can try writing your name. I'm actually just gonna write the word name to show some of these concepts. Okay, so here is the word name. I'm going to add just a little bit of shading on the A right here, and then just a little bit on the M. You could also add a little bit on the N if you wanted. You also don't have to shade it at all if you don't want. So let's find some of these straight lines, left curves and right curves. First, we'll look for some straight lines. So there's a straight line in this part of the N right here and right here, in this part of the A in all of these downstrokes of the M. Now let's look for some right curves. Again, a right curve, the curve part is going towards the right side of the page. So there's a right curve at the bottom of this A, the bottom of this E, this part going into the E, as well as this first part of the connecting stroke that goes from the N into the A. And finally, let's look for some left curves. See a left curve right here, right here, 
this part going into the A. I forgot to point out this right curve that leaves the end of this A and then it turns into a left curve at the top of the M. So right curve, left curve, right curve, left curve. This is a left curve, this is a left curve, and this whole thing right here is a left curve. And lastly, this part of the A is a left curve. So every single stroke is counted for. We have left curve, straight line, left curve, straight line, right curve. So I encourage you to try writing your name in whatever kind of script. If you have any knowledge of cursive, try just doing it in a basic cursive script. Or if you don't know cursive or Spencerian, then just try writing the letters and connecting them together and think about making only straight lines, right curves, and left curves. And if you want to learn more about Spencerian, there are tons of resources on the website archive.org. You can find scans of old books from the 1800s, or you can also join our online course and learn more about it at lovelyloops.com slash Spencerian. So tell us in the comments if you are enjoying this video, if you're enjoying learning the process and learning the breakdown of these letters. And now we're going to talk about doing Spencerian on your iPad. So the first thing to know about doing Spencerian on your iPad is that an Apple Pencil does not behave the exact same way as a pen or a pointed pen on paper. There are different settings that you need to play around with to get the right feel. So I have a brush that I've created and I'm going to write the word name again just so you can see what it looks like on the iPad. You can see I was able to get some of that subtle shading here with this brush because it's pressure sensitive. So if I press harder on certain strokes, it will get thicker. I try to keep my shading very delicate though on Spencerian, especially on the lowercase letters. Some of the downstrokes, you can just barely add a little bit of shade. We talked about how Spencerian was created so that you could write quickly, but I don't want you to think about writing super, super fast. And it's actually really hard to write quickly on an iPad because your pen kind of auto corrects what you're doing with this brush that I designed to be able to write like this. So if you're writing too fast, it's not really going to look right. I encourage you to slow down and just really focus on the details. That's my next biggest tip for beginners. One of the benefits of using an iPad is that you can zoom in and see the details. Now this is kind of a blessing and a curse because if you zoom in super close, you can see every tiny, tiny pixel. So don't zoom in too close because then you'll go crazy trying to get it perfect, but you can definitely write at a bigger scale than you would on paper. When you're first learning it, you want to zoom in close enough that you can see all the details. You can see what you're looking for. You can see all these angles and the measurements of the width of how wide the letters are supposed to be. So for example, the N is supposed to be three units wide. That's why we practice on this grid. One, two, three units wide. Zooming in will help you learn all the details, but then once you understand how the letters are supposed to look, you can zoom out and write at a smaller scale. You'll also find that when you are zoomed in super close, you will have to lift your pen more often. And then once you get the hang of it and you can zoom out, you'll be able to write with a little bit more flow and rhythm. So let me know in the comments if you have tried Spencerian before, and if you have any questions about learning it, also please let me know if this tutorial was helpful to get started. If you'd love to learn more, head to our website, lovelyloops.com slash Spencerian, and we would love to have you in our course. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you are feeling inspired to try out Spencerian today.